I want to show you one final thing about functions before we finish with this topic. Before we get onto that, however, let's first briefly review what we have learned about the distinction between functions and variables thus far. We have introduced the distinction between variables and functions, and we have said that variables are labelled addresses in memory, and we have talked about how these labelled addresses have a state and how we can thus store a value in the state of the variables. We have then said that a function is a list of instructions for changing the state of a variable. In this video, I want to consider, however, that a list of instructions must be stored somewhere, and that in this regard, functions thus have some of the properties we have previously ascribed to variables. To see why this is important, consider the diagram we have always used to explain the distinction between variables and functions once more. The labelled blue squares at the bottom of the figure are our variables, and their colour indicates the state. To change the state of, the of any variable, we need a function as shown here. This function changes the state of variables from blue to red. We can indicate what this function does to the state of the variable using the diagram shown here. Variables in the blue state enter, the function does its thing, and variables are returned in the red state. As discussed at the start of the video, however, the set of instructions in the function are themselves stored in the memory of the computer. We might therefore imagine a new kind of function that takes a function in input as shown here. This function would then change the instructions that are stored in the memory that holds the function. In, in this case, the function thus no longer changes the variables from the blue state to the red state. It now changes them to the purple state as shown here. The way in which we can use this idea in a Python program is shown here. Notice that as we have seen for all the functions we have introduced thus far, we have a function definition at the top of this slide and a function call at the bottom of the slide. Furthermore, when the function is called, arguments are passed from the calling code to the function. Notice, however, that the second of these arguments is a function, mpexp. When the instructions that are evaluated within the function are performed, this passed input function is evaluated, so the value of the function at x is returned. In this case, output is thus set equal to 1 as the exponential of 0 is 1. Critically, however, we can change the function that is evaluated within the calling code. If we pass np sign in place of np exp as shown here, Output will now be set equal to 0, as the sign of 0 is 0 and not 1. To summarise then, we have introduced this distinction between variables and functions, and stated that variables store values while functions change the state of variables. If we want to change the state of a variable, we have to pass it through a function, as shown here. What we have seen here, however, is that because functions are a set of instructions, we can also pass functions through functions and thus change the instructions that are issued within them. The exercise that follow will show you how you can apply this idea to write yet another function for doing linear interpolation. 
They will then show you how the SIMP library leverages this idea and allows you to solve the differentiation and integration problems that you've learned about in A-level maths. But this time, instead of doing them with a pencil and paper, you can solve such problems using a computer. As always, ask for help if you are struggling and good luck.